Hey, I'm back again with another video. I've been making a lot of book stacks and selling a lot of book stacks. So I thought that we would, I would show you how I do a book stack and use the new Trimmings 3 mold. It's got bigger molds, it has this little rounded edge so that they fit in right together. And I probably, eh, I don't need to show you how that works. I usually go to the Goodwill and get just junk books, you know, but our Goodwill sells them for $2 a piece if they're hardback. So I was in the dollar store and everything, the store is everything's a dollar and they had these books that were, cause you need to, they need to be roughly the same size to go together right. So they had these for a dollar a piece. So I picked up six of those to use in a book set. So the first thing that I'm going to do is put the molds on because the molds need to dry. I let them dry overnight and then paint the next day. Let's see which one is going to. Yeah, that one's too big. So we'll do this this on the screen and we'll do this one right here. So if you've watched me before, you know, put the cornstarch in get it good. It just makes them come out so much easier. So I get out a piece and I work it just a little bit in my hands and then kind of just smush it together like this. And so then I kind of roll it out like a big snake, just like you were playing Play-Doh in kindergarten. I play Play-Doh lots of times with my grandchildren, so I have lots of experience to doing this. And then you push it down in the mold. You want to go down in there very good. And then I just take my thumb and start going up the side and it has that micro rim that you can just go right it takes it off very easily I sometimes use a popsicle stick just to make sure that right there's you have to to push down as you're scraping the edge and that gets it nice and flat Flip it over, and it comes out very easily with the cornstarch. And that is, that's it. The detail on these is just incredible. Hold it up and see if it's gonna, oh yeah, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna cut it right here. And then I use what I usually do is just put some glue out on a paper plate. And I take an old paintbrush or a artist brush, something like that. You want to make sure you get it on the very edges so that it will stay down good. A lot of times I just use my fingers. These book stacks look so cute like on a shelf or um, just on a, on a coffee table or something with, you know, a little flower arrangement or something sitting on them. And I've sold a bunch of them. Okay, so I'm gonna let, I'll let this one dry. And now we'll do another one. Need the back nice and, and flat. 
<coughs> that way, excuse me, that way it glues, it glues on really well. Okay, so now I want to put on the top book a keyhole and a little key. So I've got lock and, the lock and key IOD mold, which is another one that I use all the time. And I'm just going to put this in here. Okay, so I will let these dry tonight and then I will come back tomorrow and and we will paint them and age them and I will show you how that I put them together. Hey, okay, so it's been overnight and they have dried really well and you can see the bindings on the book. Um, there's, it's cracked here, cracked a little bit there, cracked. I like that because it just makes it look old. And when we, after we paint it and we put the dark wax on it, the dark wax will settle down into those cracks and look really, really pretty. So now we're gonna paint the books. And I'm gonna start with the bottom one. I found that the easiest way that I do this, uh, rather than get out tons of paint, and try to mix colors is I just put some of the paint that I'm going to do the bottom uh, book on here and then I'm going to also for the second book get out a little bit of just white and I've got farm fresh and vintage linen from DIY paint and I'm just going to add a little bit right there right now in the first book we're going to paint in this color the straight farm fresh. Getting down in these little cracks and crevices, um, I sometimes get a little tiny brush to do it because it, it, you would think that with the the dark wax that you wouldn't, it would go in and fill up the little holes. It does. For some reason, it doesn't. You can see the white, so you really kind of have to work it to get it down there. Yeah, when you turn it to the side, you see those little white places. You see this little, um, ledge right here, I usually try to just go very easily along that ledge and get a little bit of paint on that anyway. I'll lay this one to dry and we'll paint the bottom of it. Um, I have to come back and do that. Okay, so for the next one, Grab a I'm just going to take some of this farm fresh add a little bit of spray to it and just grab a little bit of the white vintage linen and 
go a shade lighter. This DIY paint covers really, really well. It's highly pigmented, and sometimes you only have to do one coat, but on a, the darker books, on something you're trying to cover up with the white, you know, it's, I usually try to do two coats. white and make it lighter. So now we're gonna let all these dry really well and then I'm gonna come back and put probably a coat on the bottom of the book. And we'll see how the tops look and see if I need to put another coat on them. So I'll bring you back in just a little bit. Okay, so they're dry and at this point we're gonna go back and do the same process on the other side. If the paint ever thickens up, all you need to do is just add a little bit of water to it. DIY paint is made to be thinned with water for easier use, or if you like it that way. So, so I'm going to put another coat right here on this, uh, just on the molded part to make sure it's covered good. But I don't think that the uh, book cover top and bottom needs it. In this book, you're not really going to see the uh, top and bottom of the book because it's going to be sandwiched between the other two. And I do hot glue them together. I don't think if you um, took the string off of them, because I do wrap them with, um, I don't know what that string's called. Anyway, I'll show you. But I wrap them with that, and I don't think they'd stay together if you took the string off, but at least it keeps them stable. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry, and then we will come back and wax them. Okay, so I have DIY clear wax. I'm just going to take it and go over it really good. And I don't worry too much about getting great wax coverage on the outsides of these books. I think they're going to wear fine and uh, only the bottom and the top will be seen anyway. We'll get a better coat of wax on this because it is going to be on the top. Okay, start back with the bottom one again, and this time we're going to do dark wax. So I have my little paintbrush that I'm going to be using. Now I'm just going to dip it in here because I've got a good coat of the clear on it, and then I'm just going to go in like this. Trying to get down in all the nooks, the crannies, the parts of the mold. Okay, so then we're going to take a clean rag and just start taking it off.
you need to put a little bit of clear on to take off. Act like an eraser, you can do that. And I try to get a little bit right up in here too because um, that's where you'll, you will see that a little bit. And a little bit on the edges. going to do the same thing. Love wipe, just wiping off the dark wax and watching it come back and all the dark wax getting down in it just really makes those molds just pop. I will probably put a little bit more on this one because this is the top. It makes the books look like they've just been on a shelf for a lot of years and that's just really striking to me. I'm going to go back in on the first book again with just a tiny little bit of gilding wax. And this you can just do to your discretion if you like it. Or if you don't like it, you know, you put more or less. Or if you get too much, you can take it off with some clear wax. So, I'm going to show you what they look like just propped up here. The three together on the edges. And then I'm going to let them sit for just a few minutes and let my hot glue gun heat up. And then I'm going to come back and show you what I do next. Okay, so I finally got my uh, hot glue gun hooked up and find an extension cord. So, now I'm going to tell what. What I do, and this is just me, okay? You do however you feel like it's the right thing. Um, I just stick some hot glue, gun, hot glue on here. And then I take the next book and I line up the front as best I can. And just sit it down. You know, I know that's not going to hold it forever, but it, you know, I think it's going to help if you uh, keep it 
keep it steady, especially for you to get the the burlap twine around. Okay, so this is what I use to wrap around it. It comes from the dollar store. It's a dollar for this whole, uh, uh, I don't think it says how many yards it is. It lasts a long time. I've made a lot of book stacks and I don't know that I've used one whole thing yet. So what I do is just pull some out. I can do this to where you can see it. Okay, let's try this this way. And I just try to go around it about 10 times. stick just a little blue streak out. Stick the glue under there to hold this in place. Okay, I like to put a little greenery on top of them. So these, this little greenery pieces comes from a big long, you can see it, it's uh, what's left of it. It's a garland that I got at Hobby Lobby and then I wait till they're on half price sale and then I buy one and then you just pull them apart. And I just stick some hot glue down under here and stick them on. Just tie a bow in it. So that's the finished product, if you can see on the top and on the sides. So we sell all these products, all the molds, the trimmings, the paint on our website at thepaintedsisters.com. And if you need anything, please let us know. We'd love to help you. Also, if you would subscribe to our channel and leave me a comment, hit the like button. We really would appreciate it. Thank you. Talk to you.